fellow readers, in this video I'm going to share with you my recent book editions. I have not added that many uh, new books since my last videos, although I do know that I have like two giant boxes of manga coming. I didn't expect them yet because I knew a bunch were pre-ordered and there was one that had an accidental book in there that's not releasing until later this summer, so I thought it was going to be delayed. Um, instead, they did end up shipping uh, two shipments out, so maybe they took pity on me. I don't know, because I, I have a bunch of orders there, so maybe they were like, just, <laughs> just go ahead and send her those. She has a lot coming. Um, so that could be why. So I'm waiting, waiting for that Right Stuff order. Um, in the meantime, these are some other books that I picked up, and that includes manga and regular books, and not too many, like I said. Um, I think I'll go ahead and get the manga out of the way, um, one of it which you might see right over here. Um, but my recent manga is The Ancient Magus Bride, Volume 14. I still have Volume 13 to read, but um, I better get caught up. <laughs> So the next book I just picked up on a whim. I don't even remember why. I don't remember if I saw it in a different video or in an email that was sent to me. I don't remember, but it's called uh, Love and Heart. This is volume one. It's by Chichose Kaido. Um, and this says, after a messy breakup, college freshman Yo Yagisawa returns home only to find she has an unexpected male roommate. Introducing himself as her old childhood friend who moved abroad, handsome Haruma Hirose is back to do a homestay. He's totally hot, super nice, and always there when Yo's in trouble. But could Haruma's timing be a little too perfect? Plus the house next door where he claims to have lived, didn't the family there all commit suicide? So I think I was drawn in by that, uh, didn't the family there all commit suicide part. Um, it sounds like there might be some darkness here. So I don't know. I'll check this out, and uh, if it's any good, I'll, I'll do a review. Or if it's not any good, <laughs> I'll probably still do a review. Um, the next one is just volume two of Mint Chocolate. I haven't gotten around to reading volume one yet, but um, I figured the best way is to have a couple volumes to get a, a better feel of it. So uh, yeah, I went ahead and picked up volume two when it came out. Uh, the last manga editions, I was like, uh, I don't know, I finally bit the bullet and got this series, and I went ahead and got the box set of it. Um, this is The Complete Cheese Sweet Home, and I've been eyeing this for a while because I love animals and, and cats. I've, I've grown up with cats and dogs my whole life. And I adore them, so I was like, I might as well try this. It looks super cute. She's adorable. Um, so I said, yeah, I'll go ahead and get this. Um, and I read it in like two days. Well, it was more like uh, three days, I think, because I, I had a day where I didn't do <laughs> too much. <laughs> um, and I just adored it. Um, it's interesting because it is published let me think how to say this, uh, left to right instead of right to left. Um, like, did I say that right? Um, so it's not, it's more like, um, it's published more in an, a standard American style or Western style. Um, so you read it like you a standard uh, book. Um, and I'm probably going to do a review on Chi. I love this. I read it super quick. It is literally just the story of a little kitten and what happens. And there's a lot of like kitten um, antics. And if you've ever owned a cat, you'll probably recognize a lot of what Chi does and goes through. And it's super cute. Um, and this was published by Vertical Comics. Um, I don't know much else to say about it. Now I kind of want to check out the anime because there was an anime for Chi, and uh, yeah, I may be <laughs> giving that a watch because it, it, she's just super cute. She's adorable. Anyway, I'll look for a video reviewing Chi because after I read it, I knew I had to spread the word of 
the adorable cat. And because of that, I also picked up uh, Konami Kanata's um, other series. Um, well, both, but I only have one of the other series so far, and that's Fuku Fuku Kitten Tales. Um, my volume two came in a little bit damaged, so you might have just seen they stuck together. Um, but there's like a little rip here. I'm not too happy about that. It was shoved into some package, but um, adorable. Fuku Fuku is in part of Chi's Sweet Home, um, not only as a character like in the actual story, but they did like little bonus comics at the end. So some of these were repeats of what I read in Chi's Sweet Home, but there was also, you know, other stories for Fuku Fuku. Again, this is if you like cats, if you know cats. Um, really cute. It's good to read for all ages. Super adorable. And I have her next series coming in, um, at least Volumes 1 and Volume 2. I have Volume 3 on pre-order. It doesn't come out until July. Um, but I was like, I'm really enjoying these cat tales. Oh, I should say, the reason, the reason I, I picked up Cheese Sweet Home now and stopped putting it off is because my Book Riot Read Harder 2021 challenge had a category of a book where the pet doesn't die at the end, <laughs> something akin to that. Um, and so I figured she was a safe bet. She does not die <laughs> at the end. Um, so yeah, I went with she's sweet home and I'm so glad that I did that because it was a really nice break in a lot of what I've been reading and yeah super cute so that's all the manga I picked up recently until my massive order comes in which I'm sure I'll have to do another two videos for um <laughs> it'll be much like a repeat of April uh but uh I'm still really excited to get all those because it's a lot of um continuations of the series, so I'm super excited. So on to books. I decided to pick up Kiki's Delivery Service. Now I saw the movie of, from uh, Studio Ghibli, which I think is interesting now. Um, in case you're not aware of the Studio Ghibli story, so Studio Ghibli should technically be pronounced Studio Ghibli. Um, <laughs> This is so bizarre. Uh, so in Japanese, obviously, they use the harder G sound, so it would be Ghibli, but it's based on an Italian word. They did not realize that the Italians also use a harder G sound, meaning Ghibli, because it's named after like part of an engine, I believe, a, a Italian jet engine, plane engine, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so it still should be Ghibli, but they didn't realize the Italian would be said that way, so they said Ghibli. So technically the studio name is Ghibli, but you may see it pronounced Ghibli, which would actually be the way that the word should be pronounced. It's a whole thing. You've probably seen like people pronounce and mispronounce all over the place, so they always said the studio name as Ghibli. Actually, you can watch some of the old um, productions out. I'm thinking when Disney released the, the videos. There's the guy who was part of Pixar, I believe, and he would do the... Andy, Andy Lasseter, right? And he would do the introduction, and I think in one of the videos, it might have been Porco Rosso, he actually like talks about this, and it's it, it was just fascinating history. So I don't really care if somebody says Ghibli or Ghibli, but technically the studio was Ghibli, even though the word is Ghibli. Anyway, so I've seen the Studio Ghibli film, um, but... I've always wanted to read the book, and uh, yeah, finally picked it up. I will be reading Kiki's Delivery Service. It's middle grade, and it's not too long, so hopefully I'll get to this pretty soon and get a read over. Obviously, drawn to it, there's witches, it's fantasy. I love fantasy, so. Uh, <laughs> I don't know which one to do next. I'm just going to get rid of this one. I, I thought this looked cute. It has, like, a cute pri pirate premise. It's um, in deep burr in Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens. I just know there's something about, like, a prince or something. <laughs> I saw this uh, advertised in one of my upcoming teen webinars that I, I do for library stuff, um, and I was like, eh, I like the cover. I don't usually read a lot of, uh, like, pirate on the sea stuff, but I thought I would give it a try. So... Yeah, I'm gonna give this a try. See how it goes. It's just a teen 
uh, book. So anyway, decided to pick it up. Now, the next book <laughs> is actually one that I had pre-ordered, um, and the book never showed up. Um, I had ordered it on Amazon. Most of my other, like, early pre-orders I did through a Barnes & Noble order, um, but this one, I did still did a pre-order, but it was like um, a later pre-order, we'll call it that, like it was closer to publication date. Um, and then I thought it was weird. I think it released on the same day as this, and so I got a um, shipping notice from Amazon saying that my package would arrive, and I figured it would be this book. Um, Instead, it was the other book, and so I'm like, huh, that's weird. I'm pretty sure that this book was out today. And uh, I checked my account, and it said, this book is taking longer to arrive than expected. Give it another two days, and if it doesn't show up, you can request a refund or another, you know, order. Uh, so I waited, and it still didn't show up. Um, now, a story that I have heard... <laughs> in my local area uh, about what happened um, and could have been what impacted this is at one of our local um, sorters uh, for the mail because it, it usually goes to one of the area post offices to be sorted and then it's put in separate trucks and the trucks have to run to my area's post office and then my local post office delivers it to us. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like goes to a bigger post office and then the post office breaks it down. Occasionally um, it goes straight from UPS to the post office and the post office delivers. It's a whole thing. Anyway, what happened at the larger post office center, um, and again I'm not sure if that's what happened here, this book could still technically show up from that order, um, but I did hear that there was a driver in the larger uh, area that I guess was too overwhelmed by what they had in the truck and couldn't make all their deliveries so they actually dumped a bunch of mail just in like a stitch or ravine or something. <laughs> I laugh but it's actually horrible so I know that like the the post office found out because you, you can't hide that you didn't deliver the mail <laughs> like the, people are gonna know especially if there were packages because you get tracking um, but they found out, and I guess they, they were trying to, um, collect or recollect all of the missing mail that was dumped, but who knows. So there's just part of me that wonders if my package was part of that, maybe it was destroyed. I don't know. I have no, no way of knowing, but, um, it could just be in some center somewhere where it hasn't been sorted. I don't know. Either way, I did go to Amazon and I said, just go ahead and send it to me again. And usually what happens if you do end up getting a duplicate package, they just let you keep it and you can donate it, or if you want to, you can keep too. Long story short, <laughs> was it? I don't think I made it any shorter. Um, the book is Kate and Waiting by Becky Albertalli. So uh, this involves a theater, and there's two best friends, um, one a male, one a female, that fall in love for, with the same guy. Um, and then it's, I guess, navigating that whole relationship because I think, I think they might have tried to make a deal where they wouldn't go after said person, but what if that person was having feelings for an, I don't know. It's just going to be a messy, like, thing. <laughs> so I'm willing to give it a try. One, because, of course, I'm a major theater fan. Um, two, I'd like to check out the drama. It sounds intriguing. Um, nothing kills a friendship faster than a love interest, so. And, uh, I think that does it. Uh, there are a few other pre-orders that I think are releasing in May, but I'll just do a later video whenever that happens. Um, and I'm never sure if things are going to get delayed due to what's been happening in the world. Um, I know one I don't think will be, and that is, uh, John Green's nonfiction, The Anthropocene Reviewed which I will be getting, but um, I'm not sure when the release date is for that. So anyway, that'll be coming in. And then the other book, which I think originally was going to release around now, is uh, the Daniel Howell uh, nonfiction. And 
I did order that from their shop, so I have no idea what's going to happen with that one or when it's going to release, but uh, that seemed like an interesting story, so I'll be getting that in as well. Um, hmm. I don't remember what else I had pre-ordered, to be honest. I think I have gotten most in by this time that I had pre-ordered and was really interested in. There's still a ton more books that I want to read. Um, I think the new Andy Weir one is dropping very quickly. <laughs> I'm definitely going to pick that one up. Uh, that is it for this video. Until next time, bye.